Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are ready to worship the Lord together. Let's stand. We love you, Lord. We welcome you here. Yes, the world. Thank you. 
and we submit to him and we praise you for him God we thank you Lord for the greatness of you and the greatness of your word and your instruction and your empowerment and we give you honor Father we glorify you tonight and praise you tonight in Jesus wonderful name hallelujah glory to God we'll say this for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever Amen. Why don't you tell somebody close up, shake somebody's hand or hug them, tell them close up, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Praise God. You could be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The uh, Word Cure Healing Center is not meeting in July. It's going to resume in August, August 12th to be exact at 2 p.m. And then anybody know what's happening this Friday? There's a movie night this Friday, that's right, and uh, it's happening at 8.30, or it starts at 8.30. Um, it, it'd be good to get here at 8.30, kind of pick your spot, um, chairs, comfortable chairs, or a blanket or something like that would be great, and uh, we'll have uh, popcorn and water here, and then we're going to be showing the overcomer starting at 9, and uh, um, if you, um, you know, bring anything you want, you know, of course, that a Christian ought to drink or eat, but uh, um, so, but uh, if you want like uh, soft drinks or candy, the youth will sell you some soft drinks or candy, all right, and uh, um, the soft drinks, well, the candy too is, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, not as expensive, expensive as you'd get at a convenience store, all right, so uh, um, it would be worth your while to, if you, if you like soft drinks, Go ahead and wait and get it here because you can actually get it for 50 cents or candy for 75 cents. So, uh, and then there's a, you, you've seen the sign, there's a big family fun day, community outreach. I call it a big because this uh, Friday night movie night is just for you. It's just for our church family. I mean, if we have guests, that's fine too. We'll make them uh, feel apart. But the, uh, um, the Family Fun Day and Community Outreach, um, it, it is for our folk, sure, but it's also to let the whole neighborhood know we're here, and uh, um, we want to celebrate with them. We, we want them actually just to stop by and eat absolutely free and just have a good time and uh, just get to know us. And uh, what we're asking our members to do is uh, if they could bring like chips or potato salad, beans or desserts, something like that to share. And uh, we've got briskets to cook, and uh, we've got hot dogs and hamburgers. So um, if everybody, all the members, could just bring some sides, we would have a good time. Hallelujah. Well, we'll have a good time anyways, but we'd have a better time with your side. <laughs> and uh, so bring your side. And then I, it, it doesn't say, but drinks would probably be, probably be a good idea. I think drinks would be a good idea. I like to drink stuff. Amen. So, those are both coming up quick, but the first thing is, is in two days, all right? And uh, it's going to be great. Overcomer. How many of you seen Overcomer? Have you ever seen that? Okay. We, how many of you saw Rovercomer last week? Okay. This isn't the same thing. This is Overcomer, okay? Not Rovercomer. This is not a robot dog. This is, this is a girl that can run really good, all right, and really fast. And you'll, be like, you'll feel like an Overcomer by the time you watch it. In fact, I encouraged... Uh, when they were still in track, I encouraged Pato and Patty, I encouraged them to watch this movie. I said, guys, you know, you'll go to state if you watch this movie. And obviously Pato watched it because he went to state. So um, <laughs> it, it's a good movie. He, t he took my advice. Two things he, he uh, I'll, I'll just tell you something that you'll know now. He took my advice in two ways, right? Because uh, um, I, I know, everybody knows I'm probably the world's greatest coach no matter what the sport. So I told him two things. I told him to watch Overcomer. And then I said to play um, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. And uh, Selena said that she could hear him playing that every morning in the shower. <laughs> you, you go by the, in the hall and dun da da dun da da dun da da dun And so those two things, that's why I went to state. All right? Amen. I can help you too. Just come ask me after the service, okay? <laughs> I'm free. I'm absolutely free. Well, on that note, let's take up the offering, all right? All Amen. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. You ready to give? Amen. All right, let's do it. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us partake 
in your offering. Thank you for letting us bring a gift before you. Thank you, God, for your laws of giving and receiving, sowing and reaping. Right now, in this moment, it's time to sow. Right now, in this moment, it's time to plant, to give. But, Father, we know that we are supposed to, by faith, expect harvest. We expect to also receive so that we can give again. Father, we just praise you. Your work is going all over the world, Father, and that we could be a part is so humbling. Thank you, God, for all your opportunities. In Jesus' name, amen. After you give tonight, can you stand back up and let's worship again?
thank you, Father, that our sins are washed away. We glorify you. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear God. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Glory to God. How many of you are happy that your sins are washed away? You're happy the blood has been applied? Amen. Praise God. Well, sit down with your happy self. Amen. Take a, take a load off tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You ready for the word? You ready to grow? Amen. You know, we're in a series. I didn't know it was going to be in this a series, but we're in a series on Sunday morning called The Next Thing God Wants to Say. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting a hold of some things in that series, aren't we? And we're getting a hold of that we're not going to know unless we grow. That we're not going to get to the next thing God wants to say until we mature. And uh, so, well, this is one way to grow. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. Uh, just came from uh, Dallas. We had a wonderful uh, Christians United for Israel convention. It wound up being a leadership convention. Because uh, even in Dallas, uh, the Hyatt, I was at the Hyatt Regency there at DFW, and they have uh, some rules on how many can gather. Uh, there was still, I guess, uh, uh, six or seven hundred of us, between six and seven hundred. Um, but um, it had to be, whereas in Washington, it's, it's thousands, it's, it's much more. Had to do it on a little bit smaller scale. Um, and I couldn't do it in Washington at all, because... You know, unless you're a crazy Democrat from Texas, you can't gather anywhere in Washington. So I uh, couldn't do it there, and I wouldn't want to do it there with that bunch anyways. But uh, anyways, <laughs> it was good. Hallelujah. It was a marathon, though. I told somebody, I said, uh, I, I counted Monday. Monday was 10 hours of speeches with, with not a lot of break. And, uh, you know... Um, Speech is, uh, I, I believe it would feel better if it was um, everyone had the word in it, you know, and, and it was anointed. But we're talking about, uh, these are a lot of them politicians and, uh, you know, uh, experts in their fields. And so um, after you do 10 hours of speeches, uh, you're a little bit drained. Uh, Sunday night. Uh, we just, uh, I walked in late actually because we ran into some rain and uh, we got to the hotel about a little after six and got to our room and, and I got ready and everything and got down there and, and I made it just in time to hear the last part uh, of, of uh, Rabbi Scheinberg's son's uh, um, uh, 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 speech and uh, mainly about his, his uh, father who just went recently uh, passed away, and then uh, Pastor Hagee, and then uh, former ambassador to the UN, uh, Nikki Haley, and then uh, Senator, Senator Ted Cruz, and then uh, Lieutenant Governor Paxton. So uh, um, that's a lot um, on the first night, but uh, uh, I, I think they were trying to get us happy because that was a a star-studded cast for the first night. Those those people can talk real well. <laughs> Amen. They give good speeches, but a lot of good information, and I'll be, whenever I can uh, get that and to formulate some, uh, f from my notes into some clear sentences, <laughs> I'll report all that and I give you that. You know, one thing, and Charity, um, Charity, um, what does it call you do? Um, uh, reposted, um, shared. Charity shared something today uh, from Kufi, and it's big, so if you, you, you can go on her page and read the whole thing, or if you're uh, um, friends with uh, Kufi, then you may have saw it as well. If not, go ahead and go on there and read it. And uh, that's about uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And as you know, we had, we had talked a little bit about it earlier this week in some of our meetings, but I I, I used to really like one in particular. I haven't had it in years because they were already getting kind of weird a year or two ago, Ben and Jerry were. But um, I used to really, really like to go to a convenience store, and we lived right by a QT, 
in uh, Tulsa, and I would go there and get me a pint of Ben and Jerry's, and I'd finish it within an hour. Uh, but uh, I tell you, I will not support or go into any kind of Ben and Jerry's. They are, uh, um, they've already had shown some other uh, weirdness, but they are very anti-Semitic, and uh, they are for the boycott and diverse uh, away from Israel movement, and they've come out and said that. And uh, I know some people that are asking uh, Bluebell, you know, a Texas favorite. Some people are asking Bluebell to uh, make a carton with the Star of David on it, and we'll all buy it up. So uh, I hope Bluebell does that. <laughs> I heard some people are going to uh, talk to Bluebell corporate about possibly doing something like that. But I encourage you to stay far from Ben and Jerry's. If it's amusement park, then, uh, you know, they... They, use, they don't have a lot of stands in Texas, but the amusement parks do. But, you know, they have the ice cream in the stores. But, you know, you do whatever you want. But, but uh, I don't like anybody that, that uh, purposely tries to diversify, uh, purposely tries to boycott Israel in general. And uh, um, that, that's uh, an upsetting anti-Semitic uh, thing. Now, um, they'll have to be real careful in Texas because we have... Uh, we have a great uh, governor, and we have a great lieutenant governor, and there's already anti-BDS laws in Texas. You cannot get any kind of Texas funds as a corporation if you are um, part of a BDS. If you're in any way trying to boycott Israel, you can't get any Texas funds at all. So, uh, that, in fact, Airbnb changed their stance uh, because they were set to lose a lot of Texas money. So uh, Airbnb for a while decided that they would not um, open any of their Airbnbs in the Jewish part of Jerusalem. And uh, um, so then when that bill passed in Texas, um, they changed their mind. So uh, um, it's a good bill, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But there's lots of things that... Uh, we had uh, Dennis Prager, I think it was Monday night, and uh, he's a pretty wise, wise person. Lots of things, lots of good information, and I'll be sure to pass that on. But tonight, if you would, if you would turn to Romans chapter 8. And uh, I want us to continue in our series here. And we're talking about really who we are in Christ. Because you, you got to know that. And you got to say that. You know, throughout the word, just knowing is not enough. You know, uh, Brother James over in the book of James, he said this. He said, even the demons believe in God. You know, and so you knowing is, is, is not enough the big lump sum of all you you've got to do something and we went in great lengths and talked about and, and there were more scriptures on it whereas Jesus always testified about who he was and what his mission was he always confessed who I am what my mission is and so we can take a page of course out of the life of Jesus and make sure that we are always speaking that who I am what is my mission in fact if if you say that often enough and 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 bosses and management and people at a corporate level realize this that in order to get the right productivity out of their people in order to get everyone on the same page in order to get everyone working the job like they're supposed to work it they've got to constantly remind them of who they are and what the mission is. And so you can go to various corporations and they'll have continuing education. They'll have retraining sessions. They'll, they'll pay big money to bring in motivational speakers. I remember the first time I heard, uh, now I can't remember his name, but uh, he had a funny name. Um, he's passed away now, but he had a funny name. And uh, he's a motivational speaker. Zig Ziglar, yes, that's who I was talking about. I remember the first time uh, when I was in the corporate world and, 
and, and I was uh, in a small congregation to hear Sig Sickler. Wow. I was excited. I don't even know what I was excited about, but I was excited, you know. I couldn't wait to get out there and, you know, do my job. <laughs> and that's important, isn't it? But you know, when you confess who you are in Christ and you speak about what your mission is in Christ, you get, exi- you get excited to do your job. You get, you get motivated. Hallelujah. See, we can get into these ruts, and, and the biggest rut to get into is the rut where you don't speak. If you, if you lose your voice, you, you're going to be in trouble fast. You're going to sink. And, and it's, it's almost going to seem unnatural and against your flesh to get your voice back, but it's the only thing that's going to pull you out. You're going to have to speak. Yeah, and and so you don't want to get in that place. You want to constantly say, no, this is who I am in Christ. This is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to save it for Sunday, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a story that this rabbi, I forget his name. I'll have to look up his name. He was the senior advisor to... Um, uh, he was a senior advisor to the ambassador to Israel. <laughs> I'm forgetting his name too. But anyways, I, I'll know it Sunday. But uh, um, wow, he told this amazing story. And, and I want to tell it for you Sunday. But it had to do with knowing who he was. Knowing who he was. He gained respect with an Arab prince because he knew who he was. Even though they served two different gods, even though they you know, were part of separate religions, he gained that prince's respect because he knew who he was. And, and uh, it is a respectful thing to know who you are. How many of you know people that they are, you know, you see these people and, and, and they're just confident? You know, I don't, mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean like crazy confident, like they don't have really a reason, they don't really know what they're talking about, but I mean they, they really know what they specialize in, and they're confident. And, and confidence also not not a kind of a told you so type thing. Confident is not someone who's just always sharing their information because those people they need you to help them feel confident. But but real confident people, uh, um, they just they're just not shaken by things, you know. You know what I mean? They're just confident in their job, and something goes wrong in their job, and they're not freaking out. They just know what they're going to do next. You know, they're just confident in that, and and you can just sense that. You can just be around them, and you're like. And that person knows what they're doing. Man, that person is good. You know what I mean? So, uh, Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We're in Christ Jesus, and you have to establish that. In fact, we said it's a good idea anywhere in the scripture where it says in Christ, circle the in, or circle in Christ, because you're finding out about yourself when you do that, because you're in Christ. If it says in whom, same thing. Circle that, all right? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. We talked about that on Sunday. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now there's a key right there in someone who wants to walk according to the Spirit. Someone who wants to walk according to the Spirit is going to have to set their mind on spiritual things. So there, there's an indivisible dial on your mind that you can set. Now, in the world, and and the enemy himself wants you to think you can't touch that dial. You you remember remember those, uh, was it right before commercials? A lot of TV shows. Don't touch that dial. Huh? Don't touch that dial. Well, the enemy is always telling people that as it pertains to the dial on their brain. Don't touch that dial. Why? Because he he wants you to watch the commercials coming up. Because the commercials coming up are geared towards having you buy into his nonsense. 
No, you can touch the dial. You, you can. You can touch the dial. And then, you know, when remote controls came out and, and everybody had a remote, I think first, you know, the, the, the cable stations came, were the first to let us all have a remote, right? Because we might not have had the expensive TV with the remote, but, you know, we were paying for cable and cable came out with a remote. I remember first cable came out with a remote connect, connected to a cord. Did anybody have one of those? No? Oh, my goodness. It was here in San Angelo. It was a box like this. This, was, this would have been in 1988. It was a box like this, and it connected by a cord to the cable box that was on your TV. And it had a long cord. And so you could take this box anywhere in the living room, set it in your lap, and you could change your channels. And it was pretty awesome. And so there was no more don't touch that dial for me because I could touch it without any problem at all. This dial is easier to touch than that. It's easier to touch than that. And if you ever have trouble touching that dial, use the, use, use the small rudder that gears the ship. Use the small rudder that directs the ship. It'll change the channel every time. It'll change the channel. In fact, I gave this testimony uh, um, at, at the last word cure. But uh, Brother Copeland, I, I heard him on TV talking about when his, his uh, he had like a broken disc or something in his back. Horrendous. It was just horrendous. And it was pain he had never experienced before at all. But he actually remembered a teaching that Keith Moore had done along the lines of healing. And Keith Moore uh, um, directed and operate, operated the healing school for Kenneth Hagin Ministries for lots of years. And that's after doing it with Brother Hagin. So, you know, he, he, he's kind of developed a expertise along the line of the word healing. And so Brother Copeland just thought of a teaching that Keith Moore had done on healing. And in that teaching, Keith Moore talked about your mouth changing things. And so Brother Copeland said when that pain would just throb, I mean, just intense, he, he, would, he would say the word loud. I mean, he'd quote it loud. And he said he noticed this, that every time he got loud, every time he was actually speaking the word, the pain would diminish. But then when he had stopped speaking, it would get up again. I told everybody at the word care, man, y'all should prove that out. <laughs> y'all should just prove that out. Glory to God. All right. So if you get in that rut and you get in, into the place where you've been quiet and you want to get over into the spirit and you want to get this on spiritual things, say it. Say it. Say it. Speak it out. Say it. Say it. And you know, sometimes you, if you don't know the words to say, then just start talking to God first. And if you want to lay it all out in, before him, to lay it all out before him. You know, tell him about, you know, your stress and tell him about your problem and tell him about what you're going through. He, he's okay with you telling him even though he knows. Tell him all about it and then, and then start receiving from him. And then listen on the inside to what you're supposed to say about the situation. Hallelujah. You won't stay there long. Glory to God. So we want to be spiritually minded because that is life in peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is fighting God. Okay, It's enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Cannot be subject to the law of God. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We have a lot of Christians who don't even attempt to please God. I, I, I got sent something today of a pastor here in, in San Angelo that just started a church recently. And it is, it is uh, um, uh, he doesn't call it this. He calls it a non-denominational church. But after healing, hearing one sermon, I'm going to call it a Unitarian church. That's what I'm going to call it. You say, well, what is that? You don't even have to, you don't even have to get saved if you belong to that. They, they take a bunch of scriptures out of context and say that Jesus saved mankind. You don't even have to get born again. And we got one here in town that's promoting itself as a non-denominational church. Ooh, it says right here, if you're in the flesh, you cannot even please God. You can't please God if you're, if, if you're in the flesh. Now look at Colossians 1. Colossians 1, 13. 
it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us you know that word conveyed uh, means like thrust you know like that of, of a rocket thrust that's that's how fast you got in the kingdom of the sun when you got born again you were thrust in you were rocket powered in and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom now there's that key word again in whom because you're in Christ aren't you that's what that's that's who you are and so that's who who you confess that's what you confess in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So that's what I, that's, that's one, that's another thing I can say about me, isn't it? I can say, me, myself, I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. In Jesus, I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Now look at Ephesians 1. You, you gotta, you gotta say this about yourself. You know, and you got to shake the thing, the saying, the negative stuff about you. You got to quit doing that. You know, sometimes some people in their insecurities, they try to make a joke about themselves before anybody else can. And, and you don't look any better at all when you do that. Especially not around people who, who know what's supposed to come out their mouths about you. Maybe in the world that goes over kind of funny or whatever, but... But when you get into people who are actually studying the word and actually know who they are in Christ and you're a born-again Christian and you oh, I'm so dumb, I'm so good, I'm so... Man, that's, that's disgusting, isn't it? Am I just talking? No, I mean, it is because you're just like, ooh, you know? And, and, and you want to help them out and sometimes you're like, hey, don't say that about you. Sometimes they'll argue with you, though. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with somebody. You know, I usually say, well, if you want to believe that, go ahead. Because yeah, you can believe the lie, can't you? You can accept the lie. And, and you, have, you have been given by God that privilege. You, you have given by God the, the absolute privilege over any species of being able to say I accept the truth or I accept the lie and, and God will let you accept the lie if you want to accept the lie he'll let you do it he'll let you do it because it is your choice it is absolutely your choice but praise God we can accept the truth we can we can accept the truth Ephesians 1 verse 7 here's another one in him we're in him aren't we in him we have redemption through his blood that means you're redeemed hallelujah you were ransomed you're redeemed in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace man my sins are forgiven I ain't got sin that's not forgiven my sins are forgiven hallelujah Romans 8, back to Romans 8. This is in him again. In him, in whom, through him, because this is you. You're in him. You made a determination that you were going to be in Christ, didn't you? You said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in Christ. That's my identity is in Christ because he was my substitute, right? He was your substitute, wasn't he? Didn't he take everything that was wrong with you? And didn't he give you everything that was right with him? Yeah, so your identity is in him. When God sees you, he sees him. That's your identity. Hallelujah. In fact, the enemy sees him. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said one time, just a bunch of little Jesuses. Now, you know, that disturbed religious demons, but I can definitely see their point. Huh? I can definitely see their point, little Jesuses. Yeah, we're not saying you are the son of God. We're not saying that you led a perfect life. But what we're saying is he was your substitute, and now you're in him. You go so far as to say you're hidden in him. Hidden in him. Ooh. Man, you better.
better watch what you say. <laughs> You're hidden in him. You're in Christ. Hallelujah. So where would we go? Romans 8? Look at verse 37. It says, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through who? Through him who loved us. You know, we can be so confident about these in him and whom through him that we don't even have to go around, you know, when we're saying it, which we need to be saying it, don't we? You know, you don't have to go around even qualifying it. I don't have to go around and say, I'm saying who I am and I understand I'm in him, right? Now, if I'm saying it for you or to teach you something or mentor you or help you, that's different. But if I'm saying it for me, I don't have to qualify it. I don't have to make sure I say, well, is that through him, in him, in Jesus? No, I say I'm more than a conqueror because that's a reality, isn't it? If I'm in him, I'm more than a conqueror, isn't it? So I just say I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. Because I'm in him. And you can say that because you're in him. Hallelujah. So that, that you know, that's all you're allowed to say. You, you should, uh, again, you have the choice. But, but I just dare you to commit to it. All I'm allowed to say about me is who I am in Christ. That's all I'm allowed to say. Uh, some people, if they heard you, they'd think you're arrogant because they, they have no clue about it. They have no revelation in that. They have no revelation in it. But bless their hearts, they need revelation in it. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. That's who I am. Now look at Philippians 4.13. Look at Philippians 4. I'm in him, aren't I? You're in him, aren't you? You know, the only, the only way these in him realities are not so is if you take yourself out of him. In other words, you, you try to do it without him. You try to do it separate from him. But as long as you stay in him, and that's your choice to be in him. The Bible talks about putting on Christ. It's your choice to stay in him. Hallelujah. As long as you're in him, this is you. This is absolutely you. You would have to get over into the flesh for this not to be you. It's actually easier for you to stay in him than it is to pull yourself out. Mm -hmm. It's a difference of being spiritually minded or carnally minded. Spiritually minded or fleshly minded. Amen. So you, you, you've got to, you know, our minds have been brainwashed to the world. Our minds have been brainwashed to the world to believe lies even about ourselves. You know, and, and we come out of this, and when we come out of some, at least some of that brainwashing, because we renew our mind to the Word of God, and we come out of some of that brainwashing and we look at the world and we're like how could you even think that what did somebody put something in your drink what, what are you talking about right you'd think that they had the Kool-Aid you're like what are, are you serious I mean, I heard some examples just this week. I heard some examples just this week. Somebody, somebody said just this week. That, and, and I hadn't noticed it, but it's so. That, they, that the airlines, the airlines will not say on any announcement, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. They, they, they think of other generic words to use. They won't say ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad I'm not making that announcement. I'll, I would say ladies, gentlemen, and idiots. want to be inclusive you know <laughs> let me include everybody ladies gentlemen idiots <laughs> this is your captain <laughs> I'm about to open the door no <laughs> Philippians 413 man if, if you ever had a situation that on your own you wouldn't have been able to do you've stood on this scripture Philippians 413 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Now, the last part of that is the reminder of how you're going to do it. The first part of that is who you are. I'm the one that can do all things. I'm the one that can do all things. I'm a Christian, not a Chris can't. I'm the one that can do all things. Amen. 
Hallelujah. You know, I used to like what this minister would say when something would come up and his kids or his wife would be like, well, what are we going to do about that? He said, well, we're going we're gonna to act like God's word works. That's what he said. We're just going to act like God's word works. We're just going to. My, my uh, Hattie this week, I don't know, I don't remember what day it was, but this week she said uh, there's something, family situation, and, and uh, um, I won't go into all of it, but anyways, I was talking to Charity about it and uh, uh, trying to help them and, and, and whatnot, and, and she said, uh, Dad, are you stressed about that? Because I know what to do when you're stressed. And I said, no, I refuse to be stressed about that. I'm not going to let that situation stress me. You know, I'm going to lay it out what they can do, but if they don't do it, that's on them. I'm not going to be stressed about it. I'm not going to enter into stress on account of somebody else. I mean, you got to make that determination. You know, you, you don't need to be stressed because of your kids. You don't need to be stressed because of your parents. Because <laughs> both can be stressful. Amen. You know, no, no, I'm not going to be stressed. I told her I'm not. And, and, you know, she had good advice. She said, well, let me tell you what, I, what you should do if you are stressed. And I said, okay. And so she told me. And it was good advice. It was about thinking about something happy or something. I don't know. But, but it was pretty good advice. It was changing the dial, you know. <laughs> she didn't call it, but that's what it was, changing the dial. And I said, oh, that's good. That's good. You know, and she said, if, if, if I'm ever stressed about which toy to choose, because sometimes that's been an ordeal. <laughs> and she said, then I just think about the happy times I'm going to be having with this toy. And I just try to think about that. I said, that's good. That's good. That'll keep you out of stress right there. Some of y'all can take Hattie's method and operate it in your life right there. Just think about how happy you will be. <laughs> Amen. But, but no, I, I'm not going to get in it. I'm not going to be in stress. I, I'm, I'm just not going to. I'm not going to. I realized I was going to be late for that meeting Sunday night. And I said, so be it. I'm going to be late. You know, I had rain, hydroplaning all over the place, and Dallas traffic. No, I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. But I ain't worried about it. I ain't even, I, I'm not even going to go in there soaked, and I'm, I'm going to go up. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to look nice, and then I'm going in late. <laughs> Amen. I had to wait on dinner. There wasn't any dinner for me. I had to wait, wait till later to eat, but that's okay. Amen. I could, I could miss a couple of dinners, still survive, still be all right. I've got some reserve. Got some reserve on hand. Amen. Galatians 2. <laughs> no, I can do all things. I can, I'm the one that can do all things. Say that. Say that right now. Say, I'm the one that can do all things. I'm the one that can do all things. I'm the one that can do all things. Do all things. Do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know how come people actually, uh, well, you know, we got a bunch of dumb people that know, know what pronouns mean now. But I don't know how come somebody could look at that and not understand that they themselves were going to do something. It says I. You see that? It says I. And, it, and, and when speaking of Christ, it says through Christ who strengthens me. Huh? Well... What, if, if this is nailing a board, Jesus isn't picking up the hammer here. Jesus isn't holding the nail. You holding the nail, you picking up a hammer, and you're hammering in. He's giving you strength. It's through him. It's through his ability. See, people will sit on that scripture and, th and wait for God. Well, I don't know. I need to go mow the lawn, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, first, get your ugly clothes on, right? And then get some, uh, uh, what do you call them, closed-toed shoes that can look green, you know, because they're going to get green stain, and then go outside, right? You sit in your living room, no, God isn't strengthening you that, that osmosis, he's going to pick you up, 
throw you outside and start the lawnmower and swat you on the behind and say, Go! But some people are waiting on God to do just that. You know? Some people, isn't there a Christmas cartoon? I believe there is. Oh, it's coming to me. I believe it's Rudolph. You know, and they sing the song, just put one foot in front of the other. Y'all heard that? And soon you'll be walking out the door. (laughs) Amen. Some people just need to put one foot in front of the other. If you're supposed to do that and God's going to give you strength to do it, well, get up. Come on. Put one foot in front of the other towards what God is going to give you the strength to do. That's faith. Sitting on the tush ain't faith. Right? Anybody can do that. It's time to get up. Somebody asked me the other day, they believe in God and this pain went away. No, it was early this morning. And they had had pain all night. And then this was like, what time was it? This was like maybe about 9 o'clock. And said they hadn't had pain since 7. What should they do? I said, I said you do what healed people do. Go to work. <laughs> Even if you already called in, said, bless God, I'm healed. I'm going to work. And that, that already lost some of you. <laughs> some of y'all just checked out when I said that. No, I already called in. I got the day. <laughs> Your faith may crumble too. <laughs> huh? You better look for another day. You better look for a, a happy will day. Go claim yourself a happy well day. I need to take off today for a happy well day. Amen. A rest day. Glory to God. I think they call it vacation. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> I tell people all the time that, that when you believe in God and you call in, it might be hurting your faith. It might be hurting your faith. Now, I mean, depending on the situation, there's, 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 there's times where it would be better for you to have your faith at home. Okay, so so I'm not saying there's never a situation, but I'm saying sometimes when, you know, this particular person, you know, I, I'm, I hadn't hurt in two hours. What do I do? Do what healed people do. You've been healed. Sometimes it, it's almost a surprise to people when they're healed. They almost get shocked. Oh, that doesn't hurt anymore. What do I do? Should I see a specialist? Why? You know, I guess there's preventative things for some things, but for other things, ain't no preventative for that. When you healed, you healed. When you're not healed, you're not healed. (laughs) When you're not healed, claim the healing. Grab a hold of it. Receive it. Does that make sense? So, I don't know how come we got on that, but it's good. So, what we're talking about, if I can do all things through Christ, then I need to act like I can do all things through Christ. You know? And, and maybe, your, maybe your first reaction, maybe you were in the flesh. Maybe something come along and knocked you down. And so you had a little, uh, a little uh, what do you call that, a fit? And you threw yourself a little fit there in the floor. Okay, you had a fit. All right, it wasn't pretty. The flesh is ugly. No matter how, how you wrap it up, the flesh is ugly. The flesh... Being ugly is no respecter of persons. Everybody has ugly flesh. But now it's time to say, okay, I had a flesh. I had me a pity party. Shouldn't have done it, but I did it. Now I'm going past it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I need to stand up, gather the strength that Christ is pumping into my muscles and veins right now and get about the task at hand because there is a solution. Every night, almost every night, I work, I have it on my phone because it was hard to keep up with all the magazines and sometimes late at night they're not, you know, they're they're not easy to see when it gets late. You know, when it gets late at night, how many of y'all need more light when it gets late at night. <laughs> and so sometimes in magazines, they're like, mm, what does that say? So I have Sudoku on my phone. You know, I just put the brightness however I need it. And I do a hard Sudoku. That's the level, hard. I do a hard Sudoku every night. 
Well, sometimes it's taken me over an hour to do one. It has. But when I'm doing it, sometimes it looks like, well, there's nothing else I can do. And my mind is tempted to say there's nothing else I could do to solve that. But I don't let it say that. Or it may say it, but I change what it's saying. I said, no, I haven't, I haven't found the way yet. I haven't found, I haven't, there's something that will work in this puzzle. There's something that will work here that I'm not seeing yet. Is what I say. Now that's just I know that's that's a thing they say it's good for your mind. That's that's one reason I do it, and the other reason I, I enjoy it, and I like solving things. I like it. It feels good to me once it's solved. Actually, the best feeling is once I know it can be solved, and I'm plugging in the numbers. I, I'm I get kind of bored finishing it up when I know what everything's going to be. Just to tell you the truth, the best feeling is when I whew, I got it. You know, that's the best feeling, and, and so I like that, and that's 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 why I do it. And so that's just a game, but, you know, you could use that same mentality on anything, no matter what it is. I know there have been things around here that, that people have looked at, you know, whether it be a computer or Internet or Facebook or anything, being like, man, this, this can't work. Well, no, it can work. You just need revelation on how it's going to work. It can work. There's just something you haven't seen yet. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And no matter what you come up against at work, no matter what you come up against at life, there is, I promise you, a solution to that problem. There's an absolute solution to that problem. Some of the most successful people in this world are people that do nothing but come up with solutions. There are people on this planet that every time they come up with, they don't do the work. Every time they come up with a solution to something, they get a check for over 10 grand. Ford Motor Company, back when, uh, uh, was it Henry Ford that started the Ford Motor Company? Sometimes I, I don't know his first name. I want to say Harry sometimes, but Henry. Henry Ford. He used to pay this guy, this computer genius. And, and they were stuck. I mean, they were completely stuck on something. And this guy came in, and, and this is a number of years ago. This is back when 10,000 was really 10,000. You know what the old timers always say. So, but, but seriously, it'd be like 100,000 today. But he came in, and, and with, within just a few minutes, I think maybe it was 15 minutes. I'm not sure if you know the story, correct me. But, but within just a few minutes, he had it solved, and he uh, wrote out a bill and sent it to Mr. Ford. And Mr. Ford said, I'm not paying you that for 15 minutes of work. And he said something that he was going to pay him. And he said, he said, okay, that's fine. You, you can pay me for 14 minutes of work, but $10,000 is for, is for the solution I had that no one else around you had. There's always a solution. There's always a solution. You know, I, I believe that's one reason why President Trump was so successful and was allowed, and, and God was able to use him to accomplish the things that God was able to accomplish through him is because his entire life, he found solutions to things that other people had failed at. There was an ice rink in New York City that had been an utter and complete failure. And no one, it, it had plumbing problems, it had all these problems. And it, it couldn't work. And so President Trump said, I can do it. And he bought it, pennies on the dollar. And then he said, well, who's the experts on ice? Let me get some Canadian in here. And so he called Canada and got some experts on ice. They fixed the problem because they had the solution. It opened it up, and it was a big success, and he sold it. He had problems. He had solutions to problems. Amen. You know, <laughs> when, he first, when he first built that mansion there in Florida, he wanted a big tall flag and they told him the city told him you can't have your flag over so many feet tall and then he put it tall and then they find him and so he wanted to settle out of court and so he said uh, he said okay I'll pay that amount but how about I pay it too and he named a charity and they allowed it and then what he did instead of instead of lowering that flag he had them built uh, um, like he has done on his golf courses that's how he knew about it how they build up the ground <laughs> 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 
And so he built up a mound and made a small little mountain on his property and put a shorter flag. And it still waves at the same height as it did before. <laughs> Just had solutions to problems. There's, there's a solution to every problem. And so the trick is not to get frustrated and say, I can't. The trick is to say, no, I can. I can. I can through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It just seems like some of y'all might be facing some things. I don't know if that's true. But I want you to know you can through Christ. You absolutely can through Christ. There's a solution to it. There's a solution to it. You, 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 you might have to break away from the noise. You know, you know what I mean by that? There was some baseball movie. Um, oh man, I'm using all these metaphors today, aren't I? I'm speaking to you in parables like Jesus did. But there's some baseball movie, and I think it was Kevin Costner, and, and uh, he was a pitcher. Y'all, anybody ever seen that? He was a pitcher, and, and before he would pitch, he was like working on the perfect game, right? And I think he retired something right after that perfect game. I don't know. It's been so many years, but he used to say something about the noise. You remember that? When he'd get up to the mound and he'd hear all the crowd, and he'd say, something noise. And to him, it would all go silent. And he would put all his concentration on that pitch he was about to do and act like it was only him with his team. And that's it. And throw just a beautiful strike, you know. Sometimes you got to do something about the noise. The enemy can get real loud. And so you, you either need to get louder <laughs> or you need to get some worship music on and worship until you find that place. Because there's a secret place, isn't there? Yeah. David knew exactly what he was talking about. There's a secret place. There's a place where you get to with God that doesn't have the noise. And once you get there with God, then answers come. Solutions come. Things change. But don't undo it with your mouth. I can't, I can't, I can't. No, no, no. I can. I'm a Christian. I can. I can. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. God bless you.